and welcome back to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I'm your host, Haley Hayhurst. Around this time last year is when I started to actually think a lot about the course that I wanted to create for my business to make some passive income, but also help people in a new way. So I actually hired the guest that I'm interviewing today. Her name is Tracy, and she is a coach to help you with your course creation. So I took her course on how to create a course, and my course was born. My course is called Great Guesting, How to Be an Unforgettable Podcast Guest, and now is like a really good time for me to be promoting this because going into the new year, you know, a lot of people want to start their podcast, but they also want to grow their business and being a guest on podcasts really does help you grow your business and build your longevity with your business mission. So a little bit about the guest today. After spending nearly 10 years creating online courses and training both higher education and corporate healthcare, Tracy decided to start the entrepreneurial route. So she is on a mission to have hashtag no more crappy courses is what she calls it. And she wants to make sure that everyone who creates an online training knows how to use the learning theory and adult learning psychology to truly deliver the outcomes that they're promising to their audience and what their audience really wants. And so by working with Tracy, I not only learned how to create a course, but I learned what makes a course good, who to market my course to, and really like seeing it from a bigger vision. And so working with her was truly amazing. I would highly recommend her if you are looking to start a course. So check out the show notes. She has a bunch of freebies in there and a lot of other ways to connect with her on Instagram or in her Facebook group. So let's get right into this episode. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. I am so excited to be here. Yeah, this should be a really fun conversation. So, you know, a little bit of backstory. Tracy was my coach for creating my courses and super fun. Definitely helped me out with the accountability part and kind of just like the planning on everything. So you're an incredible coach. So I had to reach out to get you on the podcast. Thank you. So to start off, I would love it if you could share, you know, your story and really how you got into being a coach for courses. Yeah, it's a it's a twisty, twisty road, but I've been an entrepreneur since I was in the in the fourth grade. I've always had some business of some form or another. And when my when my kids were very small, I did products. I had a soap and candle business that um, sort of still exists. It's just not like my daughter does most of the manufacturing for that now, kind of as a hobby. I went to college. I did all the things. I was going to be a lawyer, decided not to do that for various reasons. And I ended up getting divorced when my kids were really small. And I went back to school to be a medical assistant. It was a recession proof job that I could have and nobody would ever be able to take it from me kind of thing, which was what I was looking for at the time. Divorce is, is you know, total mind screwer that way. And I realized very quickly that as a single mom with two kids, I couldn't support myself on that income. And I went looking for other ways to make money. And of course, always an entrepreneur, I still was selling candles and doing my thing. And eventually I found out that I could teach medical assisting as a medical assistant with a couple of years of experience. And I went back to my alma mater where I'd gotten my medical assisting diploma and I started teaching for them. And we were going through a big accreditation review and I had to actually like recreate a bunch of curriculum, which was super exciting and way more fun than I would have expected. I ended up getting recruited from that school to open a new medical assistant program for a brand new school that was coming to the Twin Cities where I lived. And in that sort of transition, I decided to get my master's degree in education. That would make me a better course creator and also make me more marketable to my, you know, my college and other colleges. And that school ended up kind of closing up halfway through my master's degree, but I was pot committed and finished that up. And I got a job working for a hospital-based ambulance service doing education for them. So in my work as a medical assistant and teaching medical assisting, we were very into competency-based education. It's super important, right? If somebody's going to draw your blood, that they know exactly where to poke you with the needle, exactly know what to do, know when to release the tourniquet, all those things. And so ambulance service education 
was also very competency based and also way, way more life and death. So how much of each medication can you administer without killing someone and things like that? And loved it, loved, loved, loved that work and got a lot more experience with actually creating online courses curriculum and eventually decided that I hate working for other people, especially old men who don't understand what it's like to be a single mom with a couple of kids. And I had teenagers at the time who really, really needed more of me. And I decided to scrap it and to launch myself as a freelance course creator. And I did some done for you services for a while and hated it. (laughs) It was very much like punching a clock. And eventually someone asked me if I would coach them through the process. They wanted to learn how to do it themselves. They didn't want me to do it for them. And I said, sure, I'll do that. And that was kind of how it all began. So a very, very windy, twisty road into how I learned education. But I now have 10 years of experience between teaching at the higher ed level and then creating curriculum for hospital-based education And yeah, and it's been kind of crazy and fun. And so now I help online entrepreneurs mostly. I always say high integrity because you have to actually care about the results that your learners are going to get. I help them create online courses that deliver the transformation they promise. And that's through an emphasis on the education part. Most course gurus, if you will, teach marketing and marketing's not your course's problem. Your pro- course's problem is that it doesn't give d- deliver results if your people aren't finishing it. So that's mm-hmm. where we are today. Yeah, that's awesome. And good for you for seeing the vision that you could have your own business and wanted that freedom and all of those things. And I think it is, you know, a big part of stability. You could stay in that, you know, corporate job or higher education job, but you really wanted to start your own business. And that's great because now you're helping Mm -hmm. so many other entrepreneurs. And when I went through your course, it was a group course. Mm -hmm. And what kind of made you decide that group coaching was, you know, the best way for you to deliver your results to your clients? Yeah. I mean, I still do. I you, I actually went back a little bit, but took a step backwards this year and went back to doing a little bit more one-on-one. I still have the program that you did and still have students going through that. I think, I mean, it really depends on what you need. And I base, I kind of price and offer my, my packages based on how much of me you need. But the, the group thing is super effective. I know when you went through it, there were only a couple other people in it who really didn't engage the way you did. So you didn't have, you know, the group dynamic, the community that, that I strive for in that, in that group. But a lot of times just hearing what your, you know, what your peers are going through and hearing what their ideas are and hearing like what tech is working well for them and what's not. And all of those things can be so, so helpful. I I think that there's a quote and I won't be able to think of it right now, but it's something about like, like you can't choose your teacher or something along those lines that, you know, we, you can listen to me all day long and you're only going to get so much, but then someone else tells you the same exact thing perhaps. And all of a sudden now it resonates. So in the group program, you get so much more of that. And it's as it's as we used in in the classroom as well is like the reteaching you know like I, here's I I'm, I can teach you all these things but why don't you come up to the front and now you teach the class and for whatever reason learning from your peers sometimes sticks even better than learning from your mentor or your teacher mm, absolutely I love community aspect and entrepreneurship because I feel mm-hmm. like especially in the women helping women kind of mentality for entrepreneurship like it's so fun collaborative and Yeah, that's like truly one of my favorite parts. Yeah. And from a business standpoint, why group programs is because you can only serve so many one-to-one clients. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I talk about all the time in my group. And every time I speak, you know, if we talk about working smarter, not harder, and it's, you know, you can, you can serve people really effectively one-to-one and it's great. And it's probably, you know, probably the best way, you know, to make sure someone gets results is to be working right alongside them to do it. But how many clients can you take one to one and still have Mm. quality of life and still have time to spend with the people you love and all the things and a group program can really, really allow you to create more impact in the world, help more people in less time and make more money. 
So <laughs> it works yeah. out in the, in the long run, it's a win, win, win. And then in my priority, always 100%, even though now I live a state away from where my children live is that quality time, making sure that when they're available, I can be available there. My daughter turned 20 yesterday and Aww. my son will be 23 next month. So they're not babies anymore, but mm -hmm. if they need me, I need to be able to be there. And yeah. that's, that's always been, and will continue to be my priority. Absolutely. I love that. I see a lot of people coming out with courses now for exactly the reason that you just said. That's why I created a course. I wanted to make more money. <laughs> and like you said, mm -hmm. there's only so many clients that you can take on at a time without ripping your hair out. So I also see this whole new thing of like everyone creating courses for everything, right? I see this on TikTok. I feel like every creator has a course now. And some people are very hesitant to pay these creators for courses. I'm not sure if you've seen this on TikTok, but it'll be like artists teaching you how to paint on a course or fitness people doing like a quick course like that, like quick win type things. And how do you kind of look at this? Like who should create a course when should you create a course? All those things yeah. that I think hold a lot of people back. You can easily take all of these things and transfer them to starting a business too. Like, you know, do I, should I, should I start my own business? Well, that depends. Should I create a course? Well, that depends. Do you have a solution to a problem that someone is, is suffering from? And when I say that, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you see so many people now, like I, I had a, somebody I did a, a discovery call with and she is an addiction coach and she wanted to launch a course to help people who were dealing with addiction. And I, I passed on the opportunity to work with her because it's one of those things that your people who are in their addiction right now are not going to pay you for help. You know, they're, they're barely going to get free help if their family members, you know, want them to do it. Like it's, it's one of those things where you can't clearly define who it is that has the problem and how you're going to solve their problem. And that's, that's the key right there. Do you have the solution to a problem somebody has? And can you clearly define who that person is? and how you can communicate to them that you, you know, yay, I'm the solution to your problem. And, you know, whether that's business or whether that's creating a course, it's the same exact thing. The problem that I see a lot of course creators have is that they go, I, I have a great topic for a course. Great. Who is it for? And they're like, well, it's for everyone, everyone. And like, well, no, specifically, who's it for? You know, who is really, really going to need the solution? Well, they don't need it, but they might want it. Well, then I wouldn't create that course. If you don't have, and, and, and I shouldn't say that, but like, I mean, if it's something fun, you know, people will spend money to have some fun. If you, you know, had a home bartending course, you know, I would bet you could get a bunch of people to be like, how do I make fancy cocktails at home or a, how to decorate cupcakes or whatever that might be. But when it comes to business courses, especially, and that's primarily what I deal with is business to business, you really, it has to translate to some sort of transformation that they want. I use the analogy in one of my lessons in my program that do you go out to buy Windex and paper towels because you want Windex and paper towels? No, I don't want Windex. I'd rather not buy Windex. Thank you very much. But I do want a clean mirror. I want clean windows. And so if you can be really clear on what the solution is and who it's for, then absolutely you should you know, create a course. And and I would say if you are serving people one-on-one -on -one and you have a framework that is working, you're getting good results and you're at the point where you're like, this isn't working anymore for my family, my needs and whatever, then definitely it's time to think. When I say course, that can be a number of different things for me. That can be a membership, that can be a group program, that can be, you know, all, all sorts of things. But then it's definitely time to look at a more one-to-many approach over the one-to-one -one when... You know, the, the thing that you love to do, you're stop, you start, sort of stop loving it because it's becoming more work than you want it to be, then it's, then it's probably time. But the, the biggest thing that I see is that people, they're not clear on who they serve and they're not clear on what they offer and how it solves the problem. And it's the, it's the first thing. It's the very first thing that you should do in business in in life <laughs> in, in courses. Yeah. That was actually going to be my next question. Like, what is the first thing? And that makes a lot of sense because when I was going through your course, that was the first thing that we worked through, you know, like why I was creating this, what the benefit was, all of those things. 
And I remember you asked some questions to get me thinking of like, why am I creating a course? Do you want to share like maybe one of those questions for anyone who's thinking, should I create a course? How do I get started? One of the things that I think is really important with the, with the why, and certainly when I am talking to somebody and I'm interviewing somebody to see if we're going to work together is, are you doing this? Are you creating this course because you want to have an impact on somebody? Are you doing it because you have this solution, you have this transformation and you want to help them make, or are you doing it to make money? I think the latest statistic that I just saw, and I'm, I probably will misquote it, but I'm pretty sure it's $233 billion. The course industry, online course industry will be by like the end of 2025. Everyone has a course. Everyone's making courses. Everyone's telling you, you have to have a course. And so many people are telling you, you may have a course and make money while you sleep. And that's super, you know, you can do all sorts of things and make money while you sleep. But if you're not doing that for the right reasons, you and I won't be a good fit to work together. You know, like that's not going to, that's not happening, but also it, it's, I, I love, I always love the the phrase, the flash in the pan theory. Like it's, you're going to be a flash in the pan. You might find some success, but creating a course that doesn't deliver the transformation that you promise is bad for business, no matter how you slice it. And so that would be the number one thing I would say, like the, you know, getting behind your why, what is it that you want to do? What kind of impact do you want to create in the world? And, you know, are your motives in the right place? Totally, totally. And I know you mentioned that you don't really coach on the marketing side because the creation and the outcome is really the most important thing. But I know you have a podcast, you have a Facebook group, you have these communities that you're building. I'd love to mm -hmm. kind of hear what strategies that you use to actually promote you know, your coaching, your courses, your podcast, all of these things. You know, I love podcasting. That's my whole business. Okay. And so I always ask everyone with a podcast this question, like, how are you using your podcast or your Facebook group to actually grow your business? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the one thing that I do teach within my program is when I first launched my very first DIY course, I was working with a coach. It was like a, a super small little like limited time package. And I was freaking, literally freaking out that I was finishing this course and no one was going to buy it. And she coached me through like this very basic little like three-step plan to get some eyes on my course. And I took that and expanded on it and I test it and refined it. And basically what it is, is creating a focus group. And, you know, I, I teach this very, very in detail. I have the scripts, I have all the things. I actually have it available as a, like a, a one-off sort of offer as well, which well, we can touch on the whole like micro course trend that is crazy right now, super, super successful. But it basically is how to get a, basically a jury of your peers around you, present them with what you're doing, get their feedback, use that to make your program better, and then also sell it to them at the same time. It is ridiculously effective. And I used it in the, in that first beta version of my DIY course. And then when I launched my group program as well with humongous success. So I, I do know a lot about marketing. I've been, I've been an entrepreneur for 100, 100 years, like 30 some, <laughs> I don't know, 30, more than 30 years at this yeah. point. I started my first actual business when I was 17 and that was 33 years ago. So yeah. Um, so I, I know a thing or two about marketing and yet marketing like is still the thing that, that bogs me down. I have a podcast that I'm not super consistent with, but I have a new episode coming out this week. I have a Facebook group called Becoming a Course Creator, where which is pretty much the only thing I promote right now. My strategy has been that I promote the Facebook group. I get them in. When they join the Facebook group, they get a personal message from me inviting them to book a call with me. And I would say probably 3%, 4%, 5%, somewhere in there of the people who join the group do schedule that call. And then they get to hear all about what I do, how I do it, and see if we'd be a good fit. So that, you know, that totally works. They also then go on my email list. So then I stay in touch with them regularly, try to try to keep them nice and cozy warm there so that when I pitch things, they're not mad and unsubscribe. But sometimes that happens too. 
Most of my business historically over the last however many years I've been in business, because time is problematic post COVID, has been referral based business. It's been literally people, you know, I, I worked with one person who told somebody and then that person told like three other people and pretty soon, you know, you've got a, a business. It's, it's an unpredictable way to build your business, but, and then the other, like the mar other marketing tip I would give is to make just a metric ton of connections with other business people. The more people who know you know what you do and, but bonus, if they know the quality of the work that you do, then the more people there are that when they hear, oh, I need to know, you know, I need somebody who, you know, does podcasts. Oh, you know, I know, I, I know Haley and she like teaches podcasting. She's got this great course. Like I know that it's great because I know Haley. And so I know it's a good course. And that, it, that has been huge. So in February of this past year, I went to my first networking event post COVID and was t absolutely like, I didn't realize how not people-y I was until I was literally, the conference was at Disney World. I was sitting on the Disney bus at the airport all by myself. And I was just kind of hoping that no one else would get on the bus. So I wouldn't have to make any conversation and kind of thinking about just not even like, like just staying in my hotel room and not doing anything. Like I paid a, a lot of money to go to this conference, but I was terrified of seeing people. And as I'm sitting on the bus, I had signed up to be on a text thread with some people who were going to have dinner that night, the night before the conference started. And the person who started the text thread said, my flight's delayed. I won't get there. Who will organize this dinner? And I said, I will, because I knew in that moment that if I didn't volunteer to organize that dinner, I wasn't going, I was going to find, going to find something else that I needed to do. And so I went, had five people come in a dinner all together. Of those 15 people, eight of us bonded. We spent the next three days together. We cried when we left each other at the end of that conference. And we became sort of a mastermind of biz besties. And it's so freaking incredible when you have people that, that you like that much and that you trust that much. And 50% of the business that I've had since probably May has come from that group. Some referrals, like somebody wow. tagged me in something on Facebook and I followed up. One of the girls in that group is a Kartra expert. And so, you know, if they're getting their Kartra set up, obviously they're creating courses and she doesn't even tell them they have an option. You need to talk to Tracy and here they come. It's, it's a marketing tool that I would have never even imagined like could exist. Mm. And because it works so well for us, we're now expanding that the, the eight of us created our own mastermind for 2023. It's a year long experience that will also have on a two day in-person event in it. And we're like ridiculously excited. And what's super fun about that is we have a Facebook group and hopefully maybe I can have you link that up in the, in the show notes yeah, for definitely. me. Where when people come in to get involved, we immediately take them on as if they're like, a, you know, they're a part of the group. And one of the very first members of this, of our free group, who now is in the mastermind for next year, she earned the money to buy her ticket in that free group. Like with people going, oh, you do this, I'll hire you to do that. And it's. It's that human connection. And if you if you read your emails, I know a lot of people don't read all of the emails that flood in. Lots of people are talking about that. Like connection is the thing for 2023 and making sure that you are surrounding yourself with people, not only that can help you grow, but that you want to help grow too. So I know that was a really long no, winded answer that. to a short question, but <laughs> that's how I do marketing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that so much. So much of the marketing that I do, it isn't even for me. Like I'm, you know, I spend so much time now on social media going, oh, ooh, this is perfect for so-and-so. And I tag mm -hmm. them in it and then they do the same for me. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. I know you've tagged me in a couple of things and I always appreciate that because really that's how businesses grow these days. And I remember when you went to that Disney conference and I saw all your photos with your friends and I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like that looks like so much fun. I think in-person networking is scary for a lot of online business owners because like you said, we haven't seen people in so long, but I it know. is very, very important. And one thing you touched on in there was kind of like 
the trends of courses going on right now. Like you said, micro yes. courses. I remember yes. you told me a story of one of your clients who maybe had like a declutter your home course and mm-hmm. no one was buying it. And then she split it into packages like declutter your kitchen, declutter your bathroom, and people were eating it up. So, yep, the client, she's a minimalist coach. She's a TEDx speaker. She's like gone on to be like way, way more famous since she and I worked together. And she had this 12 module, like 12 hour long program on minimalizing your entire house. And she's like, I don't know what's wrong with it. You know, will you review it? And I was like, it's not your content, honey. It's the fact that this, like, nobody wants to even think about minimalizing their entire home. Like, I just want to minimize that one cabinet. And so we, yeah, we broke up, broke the course up. You could buy each individual piece separately or buy it as a bundle. And they still bought the whole thing. It's the mental, the mental shift. And that's part of, part of what I do, not just, I mean, obviously I know a lot about learner psychology and kind of how you trick people into learning things, but also in 30 years of entrepreneur, 33 years of entrepreneurship, I know a lot about, about the way that consumers brains work and, you know, the things that actually sell us. You know, we don't, we don't buy things. We buy the way things make us feel. And, you know, if you, if you I'm looking at your, if you're advertising your course, this is the perfect example. So many people make this mistake and they say, I've got this 36 hour program and it's only $147. And I go, no chance in hell, no chance in hell. Am I committing to 36 hours of doing anything? I don't, <laughs> yeah, not doing it. But if you focus on the outcomes that you're going to get for them, they won't care if it's 36 hours and hopefully you're charging more than $147 for it. But it's, it's that whole, that, that twist, right? I don't want to buy 36 hours of video, like shoot me now. What I want to buy is this solution to this problem that I have. And frankly, the quicker you can deliver it to me, the better and the more I'll pay. I love that. That's consumer psychology. Yeah, mm-hmm. really the way that you think of it is so important. Well, and a lot of course creators too, they think like I need to just create all this content. Like the more I can put in it, the better. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely backwards. The less you can put in it, the better. The shorter, more concise it is. And they're like, well, if I don't put in six modules, then people won't want to pay for it. And that is absolutely not true. What you do as a course creator is you're curating all of the things in the world there are to know about your thing. And you're narrowing it down to like, I just read 17 books and here's the one secret to life. How much will you pay me for that? To know what that secret of life is based on my experience and my, you know, 50 years of research, you know, you'd pay me kind of a lot for that if I actually knew what it was. And that's, that's, that's what you're doing as a course creator. You're curating, you're delivering them a very concise, here's everything you need to know to move forward and to get that transformation. Nothing more, no fluff. Absolutely. Absolutely. People want to see the results that they're paying for. And so I love that mentality. You know, one of the last questions I have for you, I know a lot of people want to start their courses in the new year. Everyone wants to start Mm -hmm. something in the new year. And, you know, they keep saying this every time, every time, every time. If you could say one thing to these people who keep saying that they want to start their course, what would you say to them? How much further ahead, how much more money would you have made? How many more successful transformations, how much more impact could you have made if you would have done it six months ago, or if you did it now versus a month from now? Every time I hear a business owner say, well, in 2023, I'm going to, why not start now? Why not start right this minute and start doing that thing? If you started creating your course now, you could probably have it ready to launch in 2023 or you can wait till 2023 and you can do the thing we all do and procrastinate it. And then it'll be 2024 or 2025 or never before you get it done. My absolute advice would be now, just do it now. Like, why are you waiting? If you, if you're clear on what it is you have to offer and you're clear that it's valuable, why would you wait? And I always use the analogy of the tray of gooey chocolate chip cookies. You have these wonderfully warm chocolate chip cookies and you just bake them and you know how delicious they are. And then you go, nope. I'm not going to give you any. I'm going to keep these all for myself. Well, that's rude. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to be rude and keep your cookies? Share them with people. Share them with people who can enjoy them and and can, you know, get something out of it, out of the experience. 
Mm, I love that. I love that analogy so much. It's, it's it couldn't perfect. get more simple, is it? It's like the people who are like, like I'm afraid of selling. I'm like, right. yeah, but you know you have something, right? Yeah. You know you have something, and you're going, look at the thing I have. You can't have it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and that's that's mean. That's rude. You yeah. have to at least make an offer and say, if you'd like to have it, I'll tell you how you can have it. Yep. Oh my gosh. Want some of these cookies? Come on over. (laughs) Absolutely. I would love it. This is how I end every episode with you, the guest, sharing three actionable steps that you would love to challenge the audience with today. So it could be moving forward in their business, creating their course. What three steps do you want to challenge the audience with? Yeah. I mean, the first one is make absolutely sure that you are crystal clear on who you serve exactly precisely and the problem that you solve for them. Whether you're looking to create a course now, sometime in the future or never, that is a such a valuable piece for your business. And everybody thinks they've done it, but just please just take a, a step back, take a big 360, you know, degree view and look Am I really clear on that? Do I really know? If you can't picture your ideal client in your mind when you're talking to them, you're not clear. So that would be a number one first bit of advice I would give everybody old and new. The second thing is, I think I'll go just kind of repeat, but going back and understanding that it's not the amount of content that you create. In fact, it's the opposite. And understanding that you may already have half of your course created. If you've been in business for any amount of time, you've been creating PDFs for people, you've been, you know, helping people one-on-one. If you have recordings of yourself doing things, you probably have a lot more of that content already done than you think you have and use that as a, as a launching board to get started. Done is better than perfect. You can always go back and tweak it later, but as long as what you are presenting helps them move forward and get to get the results you promise, then, you know, then that's certainly worth including. And the last thing would be, if you're not building a list, you need to be building your list, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those places could disappear tomorrow. And then where would we be? Right. And I'm, I'm the biggest, you know, guilty party. I didn't really start building my list until almost a year ago. And luckily it has grown exponentially since then and things are ticking along. But I also think, where would I be if I had really started list building six years ago instead of a year ago? But if you don't have a lead magnet already and you don't have the automation set up to capture those emails, that would be the first thing I would tell you to do. And your lead magnet, we so often just want to be like something that's interesting or catchy, but it should be something that automatically leads people into wanting to work with you or buy your course. Like it should be like the very first step of what you do. For instance, my lead magnet is three hacks to make sure your course actually teaches. Mm. And so in there, I include the top three things that I think you have to do in your course or group program to make sure that you're actually delivering the transformation you promised. It's very hard, kind of hard, hard hitting, but, you know, make sure that that automatically leads to people wanting to to work with you and to pay you to give them more information. I love those so much. How can people connect with you, Tracy? The best way place to connect with me is in my Becoming a Course Creator Facebook group. I am on TikTok. I am Tracy Lewis Stokel on TikTok. And on Instagram, I am Tracy Teaches Biz. My website is under construction. It's hideous right now, but <laughs> tracyteaches.com will be up and running here very shortly. Awesome. And those are all of the places you can you can find me. I'm on LinkedIn too. I'm just trying to get more vi- visual on LinkedIn. But yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I will put all of those in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Everything you shared was so powerful and very actionable. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me, Haley. It's so good to see you again. Yes, likewise. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results.
We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com. Thank you.